So. George, start talking. Introduce yourself. <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. My name is George Masters. I am the writer of this episode, 38 Snub. Yeah. I'm uh, Thomas Golubich. I'm the music supervisor of this lovely episode of Breaking Bad. Michelle McLaren. I'm an executive producer and directed this episode. Um, I'm Aaron Paul, and uh, I'm eating a sandwich. <laughs> I'm Betsy Brandt, and I'm watching Aaron Paul eat a sandwich. <laughs> Melissa Bernstein, I'm a co-executive producer. I'm also near that sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good sandwich, everybody. So this scene, oh my gosh, Georgie did such a awesome job of writing this scene. And, and you did an awesome job of directing it. Thank yeah. you. And Jim Beaver, didn't you guys have Jim Beaver in mind when you were writing the scene and then you actually got him? Um... Yeah. Yeah, you know, well, not at the first, at first we just kind of, you know, he came to mind as one of, you know, one of several people who we were really interested in and we were just thrilled that, you know, because he's always unavailable and he was available for it and it was great and he was totally stoked to do it and uh, he was just fantastic. He was, Fantastic. if I remember correctly, he was shooting something else at the time, and he flew in for the day, and he was really sick. He had a really uh, uh, sore throat or something, and um, and he was amazing. I mean, he really uh, pulled it out. He was he was wonderful. Fantastic, and you notice I I love the uh, the grime on this mirror. This was one of those moments where you write a detail into the script and you sort of forget about it, and then when I showed up on the set that morning, I'm like. That's great. It just it was magically there, and uh, it's one of those things. It's just like, you know, a test to how amazing our, our whole crew is. See there, the little swirls? Well, but, you know, it's not magically there. It's because you guys have such details in the scripts, and so we're inspired by them. But, yes, our art department is, is wonderful. This was a set we built on stage. I think, Melissa, didn't we convert something? It, we did, and, and Michelle, you want to talk about why it was a set instead of a location? Um, well, because this was to take place in a in a motel room, which was uh, kind of a low-end mo motel room, and traditionally low-end motel rooms are very small. And uh, we, of course, want to light the set, and we want to get our cameras and all our people in there. And in order to get certain angles, it's great if we can pull a wall, and we can't do that, obviously, on a real location. And it was such a long scene. Um, it's our entire teaser that we really wanted some flexibility with our camera movement and lighting. And so we we built it, our wonderful department um, built it on stage. And it worked out really well. Certainly did. I really wanted to uh, to play with the mirror. And in order to to do that, um, you've really got to get to be able to get some uh, distance for the for the um, for wider shots, especially in here. something like that. we We pulled the wall behind us there. I'll see that beautiful mist of light coming off the windows. It just is just hazy. You can feel like the uh, the residue of a lot of uh, hotel stayers in there. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> you can. Absolutely. There's Walt trying on his 38 snub. And this was, you know, George, we, we talked about this a lot because... Uh, Brian is has is a new level of of experience with guns and things like that. So he had to look like he didn't really doesn't really handle a gun well. But this is not episode one, season one. Right, right. So he's not like you know a complete alien to to firearms. This the West, boss. And there was a theme this season with uh, titles and guns, isn't there? Well, I think we did. Yeah, we had. We had weapons, actually. The, weapons the first episode was Box Cutter, and this was a 38 Snub, and we had Shotgun was the title of one. And so bullet it just points, sort of happened. I bullet think. points <laughs> for a while, yeah. We kept that going for a while, and then until it didn't make sense. So, so that was just something you guys were yeah. having fun with and kind of got on a roll. Yeah, there was a lot of weaponry in the first bunch of episodes. So, yeah. And the first season was movie references, right? Movie references, right, right, right. Crazy Handful of Nothing was uh, Cool Hand Luke and uh, No Rough Stuff, no Rough Stuff type deal was Fargo. And the bag and yeah. the the bag in the river and the river, uh, the bags. The cats in the, the bag. cats in the bag and the bag in the river. river. Yeah. This is one of those shots where it's it's nice to be able to get get back on with the camera. Really, a great written scene, George. As is the whole episode, but that. That scene was all about the, you know, two people in a room and, and making it tense and exciting. Of course, we had two great performers doing yeah, it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and that was amazing. It was great. Uh, Jim Beaver was such a nice guy, too, and so very professional. 
And we have yet another bar, an Albuquerque bar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which we see in a number Jonathan of these. Banks. And this is a great, uh, a great shot there with the, with the light flaring in as the keg comes in. Michael Slovis, god of lighting. <laughs> Recovering from the previous episode. I love this. This is uh, this is such a, a again a detail, a wonderful detail in the script, and and Jonathan does this subtle moment so well. And the idea is that this is a a place where Mike would hang out. Yeah, it's interesting because um, I love this moment. I think this is what I just getting the blood off. And uh, actually, this was this was we had to shoot as a an insert, and it was a very tricky insert. Um, shot by uh, not Michael Slovis, but uh, it was actually the focus was done by Melissa's husband. It's mm-hmm. definitely in focus. So <laughs> Jordan, yeah. Jordan. Jordan. That's a very tricky shot to do, and and uh, Jordan did an awesome job with it. In yeah. focus, Lady Macbeth. <laughs> Lady M. Lady yeah. M. Oh boy, and uh, Thomas, talk about talk to us about the music. Oh my God, we had so much fun with this episode. Um, this is actually a pretty good example of what happens when uh, you have no money to work with. We had to find music to fill the entire episode with, and this was sort of the first track. Oh, I love this shot. Oh. <laughs> Rumba can. Rumba. Oh my God, what a setup! Think about the gun in the first act. You start with a Rumba, knowing it's going to get interesting. Oh yeah, we had to collect a lot of music for for Jesse, and he has a brand new sound system. So we thought, well, what is Jesse going to be listening to? And we found some absolutely fantastic knuckleheaded hip hop that just felt so real. Mm-hmm. And then the clowns arrive. Sorry. This particular track is um, Dr. Period, a track called Money. And I got to say, this entire episode, I have to give a lot of props to the licensing companies out there because we didn't have much money to work with. We had a lot of music, we had a lot of budget constraints, and they threw a lot of stuff at us that we uh, would not have otherwise found. These are not necessarily known acts. Uh, we could have filled it with all sorts of like Jay-Z and, and Kanye West, which would have made sense also for Jesse. But I think that it's actually more fun that these are not such recognizable. Some are, some aren't. But this is an artist that's a little bit underground. No one really knows it, but it feels real. And these guys are obviously enjoying it in a lovely way and this stereo was uh, this putting this whole stereo equipment together this was a really big challenge for us because uh, we wanted to make it look like he he spent a lot of money of course nowadays you can spend a lot of money and have a really small stereo system right but we want um, something large and old school looking with the right. flashing lights and, and flashier than really functional <laughs> probably felt very uh, very Jesse to have a bigger Something that someone who doesn't really know that much about it would like buy, but would remember all the details of uh, what the salesman told them. And Michelle, you ended up in a stereo store in a blizzard uh, George, because of this stereo. George right? and I did. And ended George. up, yes, that's right. We uh, we actually had to shut down production because it, the weather was so bad, and uh, we were shooting uh, with um, see those speakers, the large speakers on the right there. We were shooting with those the next day or the day after, and we needed to be able to see the speakers move. Um, and because the sound was so loud and we were having a really big problem doing it. And because we shut down for weather, George and I were able to get to the stereo shop with Werner. And we met this young guy who came up with an idea uh, for a sound. They, I guess they test speakers with a sound program that, that we actually don't hear because of the pitch or something. But it's really, really loud. Am I getting this right, George? Yeah, and, you and are. It, yeah. And affects the, 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 the movement of the speakers. And Are you guys making this up just no, to punk us? It, it, <laughs> it, <laughs> it's, it's, it plays to the music. I feel like you're both so, in on it, and we're yeah. all just staring at each other. Aaron's no. done with the sandwich now. So the speaker jumps. I did like finish that. my sandwich. <laughs> and, and so the speaker jumps, and we and we got the movement, because we couldn't do it uh, practically, and this, this young guy in the stereo right. store figured it out for us. But you can't just you can't just do it to have you know you can't have someone back there poking the speaker. It has to go according to the beat, and so this is perfect because it is somehow it is the beat, but you can't well, he hear programmed it. it. So, like yeah. so he took our music and he programmed this thing overnight for us, and it was it was amazing. The, if I remember correctly, we had this is one of my favorite cuts. <laughs> great, of the great, great, great. You, you, 
know, this was when this is one of those moments when you read a script and I I read it and I this shot just came that cut just came into my head because it's great writing and I thought it would be fun, but you don't know if it's gonna work and I'm glad that people like it. it was <laughs> and Aaron, a little when you're bad laughing so hard because it's you know, but it's so funny. <laughs> and you're snorting. What what is it like when you're snorting the stuff on the set? Is it what are you uh, snorting? It's uh it's sugar. Right? I mean, it's... It's right, like, like uh, icing sugar. Yeah. Does it hurt when you actually snort sugar? <laughs> yeah, it kind, of, it kind of burns. Yeah? Does it give you a buzz? Yes, it does. <laughs> a sugar buzz. A sugar high. It gives you a sugar <laughs> high, wow. for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I have to try that. Yeah, yeah. And it actually really helped <laughs> with the scene. Yeah. yeah? Yeah, it really did. Especially after, you know, five, six, seven takes. Yeah. And you crash. You probably have a big crash. Yeah, yeah. I love what they're arguing over. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, it's The so, best zombie game out there, yeah. I have to yeah, credit my... Just uh, debating. I have to credit my 13-year-old nephew for giving me some... He's, he's a... A huge customer of the gaming industry, yeah. so he gave me a lot, of, a lot of pointers here. <laughs> I played it's, a couple of the games as well. But yeah, it's so great. You gotta lead him. <laughs> you gotta lead him and shit. <laughs> now, how did the Roomba come up in in the writers room? Um, we always, I, you know, I don't know for. Ever since, like, last year, we had this, you know, Jesse. idea that Jesse had the Roomba. In fact, I think we might have had it in an episode last year. So um, it's something, it just seems like one of these kind of completely superfluous mechanisms that Jesse would have in his house to, to you know, so he doesn't have to clean. You know, it cleans <laughs> up on its own. And for some reason, because this episode has got, you know, these huge parties... It just, it struck us that this was, this thing was just, it should be running constantly in his home. And then it, it sort of took on a life of its own and sort of became this sort of fly on the wall that would spy on Jesse. <laughs> and it's in league with Saul's chi yeah. machine. Right. It is, it is. Now, uh, Thomas, this song, we spent a lot of time finding this song before we shot Oh my God, yeah. Scene. We went through so many drafts of this party. Uh, we ended up finding, you know, Flava Flav just sort of hit it. It's a public enemy in Flava Flav track. It's Unga Bunga G. It's just so fun and silly and stupid. It just felt completely right. And... Uh, I don't think that's what we use. We did, did we use this on the, on on production? I think we did actually in the end. We we, we caught did. the speed in time. We did, yeah. We we had it in playback on the set. And Aaron, how was it shooting this scene? Oh, it was great. I mean, it was actually pretty exhausting. It I was. Bet. All yeah. of us just jumping around, going crazy, full force, and stopping, and then doing it again. Oh, I love this this shot. This whole transition. Ugh. Yeah, Michelle, you did it. Thank gr- you. Yeah, it was job. fun. We we used a Michael Solis and I used a lot of different uh, cameras for that. We used still cameras and film cameras, and we was it was and a lot of li- different techniques and speeds and things. And then uh, Kelly Dixon got in there and contributed yeah. her magic to it. That was definitely one of those moments where during filming, I was like, "Wow, this is so great." That we get to do this. It was for fun. A job. You yeah. Know? Mm-hmm. How about seeing Michelle at the monitors jamming? <laughs> yeah, jamming. She was uh, walking yeah, around. You were riling the camera, them up. Going through the crowd. Yeah. And also, what a great way to set up the whole season is like how Jesse handles what happened in episode one and how Walt does. And just those two are so perfectly set against each other. My son has one of those claws now. Oh, does yeah. he? Yeah, he thinks that's fantastic. After watching this, <laughs> <laughs> Betsy's son is three. He does not watch Breaking Bad. <laughs> Betsy, how, how this the... is so heartbreaking, this moment coming up, and you oh. do such a great job here. I know. He is, but you, it was such a fine line of, because of, she's being so, she's trying to be understanding, you know, because he's going through this horrible, horrible yeah. thing. And yeah. you did such a great job of just choking it up back, you know, holding it in. I love this scene. <laughs> <laughs> Soft rack. <laughs> so incredible. You so look like you just woke up. You and me have. <laughs> <laughs> Can you sleep? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I gotta say, it was it was hard to watch some of these these scenes because You're you, Betsy, rock. you were so into character and you were so feeling what this character would feel, and it was like, it was very, it was tough to watch, you know. You should have bought me so something. Mean to you. you should have yeah. bought me a little gift. You know, it, it was tough, but not, no. It wasn't that tough. Some flowers in my trailer it's would be nice. Gift. Kicking Dean in the shin. <laughs> you didn't see the flowers I got you in the trailer? Oh, missed those, huh? Um, hmm? Betsy, how was it to shoot this? Back like you give the 
for shit, and I'll. Uh, I mean, it 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 must be that there's something wrong with me because I just love it. It is heartbreaking, but I do just love it. It's so good. It's just, and I love you know I love working with Dean, and he's. I mean, it's two in the morning. I'm just. It's just it just broke my heart. Yeah, you two had sort of perfect chemistry from right from the get go, but you really feel yeah. like you know where you are in their relationship. I feel so comfortable with him, and and I also I mean, you know, I re- I do love him too. Oddly enough, though, it didn't seem like Dean was having a hard time being mean to you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's such He's a great moment. Defend that himself, is he? just, oh. <laughs> and I, I always think it's 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 more heartbreaking if you if you look like you're trying not to cry rather than crying. I agree. And, yeah. Oh boy, you do that so well. It just. Oh. And she disappears from view. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should have had a scene where Marie shaves Hank while he's sleeping because he's not grooming himself. She just grooms him at night while he's sleeping. Oh, my God, that's amazing. She conditions his hair. She tweezes his brows. <laughs> give him new eyebrows. Uh, I think Brian we have some, is so good at physical comedy. I was going to say, we have some great physical comedy coming up here. I think it's just funny that he has brown bag lunch to go to his yeah. job at the meth lab. <laughs> <laughs> Packing his little heat there. And he He's, writes his name on it, too, just so it doesn't get confused with anyone else at the lab. Because <laughs> there's such a big staff there. Right. Yeah. And he's got his bullets well, so knows, neatly lined up. He knows how Jesse feels about yep. sandwiches. Second order of business is... And here it comes. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> I think we put a little tiny thin piece of padding under that counter, but that was it. And it's. I don't think there was any sweetening Brian. of the sound of that hit. That was an original <laughs> hit <laughs> in production. Brian just goes for it. He does. No, no, no. I, I'm just. What, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> he starts waving the gun around his <laughs> face. <laughs> just left recorded proof. Our intention to buy a car <laughs> Oh my god. And this is yeah. this is another thing that was written into the script, which you guys do such a great job of, is that, that Walt does forget that he's holding a gun and he's just kind of waving it right. waving it around. Right. <laughs> <laughs> a loaded it's very gun. masculine yeah. gesticulation. Yeah. Can't even say what it is. Why are we <laughs> <laughs> Skyler's <laughs> driving him so crazy he's forgetting he's a gun in his hand. Hey, Someone's here for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> They're so poor at like covering up the conversations from Walt Jr. No, 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 no. no. I, I will handle it, okay? No, oh. don't put it there. Oh, oh no. no. I know somebody had a gun go do that and got, the gun went off. No. Yeah. And it went through their pant leg. Now this we've got to we've got to do a shout out here to Jason from Props and, and Charlie from the grip department because I wanted to do a Roomba cam. Um, and put a camera right on the the Roomba, um, uh, exactly what you're seeing here. And Charlie invented uh, invented this mount for the camera that's uh, got a, a metal bracket and a, and a wheel on the back of the Roomba. And then Jason got some type of uh, remote control car motor and stuck it in the Roomba and then uh, hooked it up through, I guess, Bluetooth to his iPhone and was able to operate it like a remote control car. I mean, it was just amazing what these guys did. And Alan Arkin here opening up the damn thing. Yeah. <laughs> we had a lot of fun shooting that shot. It's like we have 16 MacGyvers on our crew yeah. figuring this, these puzzles out for us. <laughs> and I, I love the progression of your house here, Aaron. It's just yeah. like it just gets oh, worse and worse with the... <laughs> this, this being the start of the, the demise of the house. Right <laughs> <laughs> oh, the punch. Yeah. I got bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> you know that's happened a million times between these two. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh, come on, he knows that he's sensitive about his zone. <laughs> yeah. They're so great together. Uh, hey, the hell with uh, with cleaning up. He Still just out. needs to constantly be preoccupied with something else. Stock up on liquor while you're at it. Keep this party going. I mean it, yo. I mean, I <laughs> We're about to hit into some M.O.P. We had to find a lot of music for this episode. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was... 
Again, this was one of those situations where we just had to find stuff that would make sense for his system, but be completely inappropriate to the moment, which kind of works here. Mm. And these poor souls are probably going to keep it running. Oh, love this, this guy. guy. Oh, I know. <laughs> That's the saddest thing. Like the forty-eight-year-old dude at like <laughs> at the meth party. I know. <laughs> we we handpicked him for that, George. Didn't wait for that. Yeah, moment. yeah. That uh, the extras casting session was uh, was very fun for this episode in Albuquerque, right? Or this... yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey, Aaron, can you talk a little bit about like? what you do to get yourself in, because your character in this episode is, is basically you have PTSD from shooting Gale like last season, right? Yeah. I mean, when you, like in scenes where you're kind of in that mode, do you were you actually thinking about that scene or how did you, yeah, how do you yeah, get yourself I, in uh, I mean, for me, I was just constantly thinking of uh, the last thing Jesse saw, I mean, you know, holding the gun, mm -hmm. uh, standing opposite Gale and just, what I mean, obviously, I've never murdered anybody, but I can imagine what it could feel like, and so just that constant guilt, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. um, was just always on my mind. And now uh, here we're supposed to think that this is uh, Gus, and this is the introduction of uh, of Ray Campbell. Tyrus is his name. Tyrus. Mm -hmm. Walt lying in wait here. And that was some challenging choreography. With mm -hmm. It was some challenging choreography. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, just, you know, to, to make it look like that Gus is going to pull the gun out, but not let, uh, I mean, Gus, excuse me, Walt, Walt pull the gun out and not presumably let Walt, uh, Gus see it, but then hide it from Tyrus when it turns out to not be him. And and Brian's really good at that physical stuff, but it was, it was tricky to make it look realistic. You're right, Melissa. Well, he had to time it from the top, too, right? Yep. He's coming across the catwalk and then down the spiral wow. stairs, and so he had to walk a certain speed, and Brian had to turn a certain speed, mm -hmm. so to make it all sort of turn into right, this right, yeah, right western as he showdown and, right yeah. at the end. And yeah, those things are tricky. They're tricky to figure out. But with these guys, with, you know, especially with Brian, he's, he's amazing at that physical stuff. So he's able to to practically look out the, you know, the corner of his eye to, to get the know where he, uh, Ray was and, and get that timing. Jonathan. <laughs> Nonplussed. So dry. I love it. <laughs> And we have that red floor. Forgot about that wonderful red floor. I love it. Oh, baby. Yeah. Look at this. We babies. have yeah. so many different babies <sighs> on know. this. Yeah, on the show. We have it's, repeats, though, so it's nice do. to see them again. Yeah, we do have some little repeats. Camry. We keep like them along until Camry. they get too big. And, and yeah. this, this uh, <laughs> like coming Minuto. season, if we see the baby, we're going to have to have uh, a whole new set. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, those kids are going to toddlers. Are going to oh. be toddlers now. Mm. Plus, this is our first time back at the uh, the the car wash in a while, right? Um, or is this actually now? I'm trying to think how deep in the story we are. This is episode, this episode two. Yeah, first time of the season. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Hello. Just a few more minutes. Nora. Reconnaissance. And Skylar is so wonderfully anally retentive and careful with her notes. What a match made in heaven. He's got his sandwich with his name on it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And she's <laughs> she's she's got an elaborate <laughs> booklet. Yeah. The, yeah. Her baby doing surveillance. Yeah. Boy, uh, oh, Dean did such a great job with this. This was really, this is physically very, very hard to do. And he did a, he did a wonderful job here. And I really like the way he drags his, his yeah, foot. And it's I, something, I love that. It's he something does we it continue. Every, yeah. yeah, he does it every time. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad. Betsy, you're so enthusiastic. And I love this moment coming up in the, in the bedroom. Oh, it's just... Yeah. Again, flowers would have been nice, George. <laughs> <laughs> or just a little gift. All the other writers give me gifts. They do? Yeah. What'd you get? Um, I have some spoons. <laughs> <laughs> tiara. A baby tiara. tiara. Okay. Some flowers. Chocolate. P picture frame? <laughs> picture frames. Lots of lots of wine. Mm. Some in a box, some in a bottle. All right. I'll have to put that in mind. I love the chemistry that Walt has with his new trainer and just how distant... He is from his well, this wife. is this is mm -hmm. this moment that that is Betsy's so great at here, and and George wrote this in the script, I and mean, this is and where he Dean kisses and, her on the high five. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Dean gonna... and, and Betsy are so great at that moment, and 
And Tank, our our uh, our therapy guy, physiotherapy guy, he did. He just pretends he doesn't see it. Mm-hmm. Great session. Lots of positive energy. Can you imagine that job, the kind of stuff that you must be witness to? People going through rehab and horrible points in their marriage. And Betsy, you're like, don't go. Don't oh leave God, me alone nice. with this guy. Nice. <laughs> so sweet and desperate. Oh, It's just, you've got a real way with him. It's, you want to go full time? <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, wait, we're supposed to talk and not just watch. I know. Yeah. He plays it so nice. He plays it so neutral. He's so careful. And Betsy, you have another color in your palette I here know. for Maria. Yes. Me. There was a, a different take for you. I remember really liking it when we shot it, but I was worried it was going to seem like Marie was hitting on the yeah. physical therapist, which I, you know, didn't right. want to right. do. But No, we, we did. I think we tried it like a couple of different ways, and, and I think this worked really well because yeah. there was that 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 fine line but it's you know you want her want her, her to feel we want to feel her desperation yeah that she, that like like you were saying george somebody's nice to her oh gosh yeah. and we're back into craziness yeah it's a, got a i think marie should just show up at your party yeah i Things think it would do a lot so for her. bad <laughs> we got some dubstep yeah. into the show we got to have some contemporary music in there oh look at that shot, shot. that's oh, great shot, that's so show. fantastic yeah. yeah great that's the gimmick if anybody wants to find something good, there's a wonderful thing online, which is all of our process shots all put together into a, a nice little mix. Our POV because, shots. Yeah, our POV yeah. shots. It's on YouTube. It's just, you know, a lot of the fans are coming up with really fun stuff. Yeah. And it's all the great I just POV saw that. It was, it was really great. Now, these extras were so awesome. They and we, because they, they were in a lot of scenes and they were part of the progression of the, of this uh, these parties. And um, they were great. They yeah. really got into it and, and had a, had a good time and they listened boy you remember that Aaron they were yeah. they were all so uh, stoked to be there as well should we bring up the reason for the pizza that doesn't have any cuts in it I, I was just, yeah absolutely yeah, <laughs> yeah for last season the pizza that went on the roof yeah mm -hmm. And people were all wondering, why is it that the pizza could go up on the roof without falling apart? Well, now you have an answer because they pass on the savings to you. Yeah. <laughs> There's a place like that uh, in Idaho uh, that they don't cut the pizza. Really? Yeah, really? Chicago <laughs> Connection. Oh, wow. It's my favorite place in Idaho. Actually. Shout out to Chicago yeah. Connection. Yeah, shout out to Chicago I Connection. I think your family has some free pizzas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bring your own scissors. Bring your own scissors. Got Emily Rios back. So sad. Oh, the oh. two of them. So heartbreaking. I think you guys can make it work. Yeah, there's you know, there's always there's always and, there's trouble. And uh, little Ian is playing Brock. Oh, he's oh. he's such a sweetheart. Okay? He's so speak. great. Wait in the car because you're now a foot taller. We don't want to see how tall you are. <laughs> <laughs> if only you like children, Aaron. We'd be uh, Aaron, you were so good with the end. He, you just uh, made it so easy for him and so comfortable. And he's such a fun, fun kid. Well, the chemistry just shows up between the two of you. You just know Jesse's transforming. I get it. Despite the fact that it was freezing outside, it was. It was really cold during this episode. Yeah. It was so cold. That's remember. You, um, I don't know if you really wanted me to wear a jacket. Oh, that's right. Because you're, like, oh, you're you know, in the party. I, I, think, I think maybe, you know, you'd walk out, I mean, with a jacket, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Right? And then this you gave me the like, look, and I was like, right, you yeah. got a jacket on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, please, please. This is probably like a day or two before that big snow storms. Yeah. It was kind of cool having a snow day, though. It was. I felt like I was in school again. Mm -hmm. Oh, my kids thought it was great. They thought it was fantastic. It was really an ice day. It was yeah, nice. There was yeah. less snow um, than there was ice. The, the roads yeah. were so dangerous yes. that we couldn't we, have our crew drive. We, we, we couldn't stage. get up. Remember the, the day before we shut down, we were all about an hour, an hour and a half late because we couldn't get up the hill. Our, yeah. our, our stage sits on the hill. And... Um, and I actually spent an hour, I live seven minutes from the stage when I'm there, and I spent an hour trying to get there, and I couldn't get up the hill, so I had to go back around like everybody else and go up the Wait, you, I the thought you got it, because you 
Stu and I were like broken down and we slide, slid off the road. I like your and jacket. And we saw Aaron. you really drive hard. right by <laughs> us. <laughs> okay, I just you want to defense. Right by us. <laughs> just in my defense, I just want to say that I, I was trying to get up this really icy hill and, and there was all these people at the side of the road with the cops and stuff and I didn't know I knew them. And so I was concentrating on driving. <laughs> you drove right by and us. I, I, <laughs> it was an unsavory <laughs> element that Michelle wanted no part of. I'm so embarrassed the and feel really bad. Because you had. You had a it Jeep. It was just an old habit. She she, the lights, drive the Jeep. cop lights, she runs, she goes. <laughs> old oh, habit. Oh, heartbreaking oh. look. Oh. And he turns. Yes. Again. He waves again. Well, I don't I think we the, shot that with a 5D. I right? love the broken, the detail, the broken back, you know, light too. That's so nice. I'm so glad you love that detail. I think it was something we couldn't remove, so oh, really? we'd leave it there. But I think it, uh, told, it, but it told we, the story. But yeah. we thought it looked like a broken back light, yeah. so we left it. We have a vast array of uh, crappy cars. Yeah. Happy show. accidents <laughs> by uh, budgetary constraints. Exactly. Oh, look how beautiful this looks. Michael Slovis. Oh. This yeah. is really amazing. This is so well choreographed and directed, this whole scene. And also Very props happy. to Dave Thanks. Porter, because I think he Great. did some really beautiful music he here. Did. It just really kind of added a whole other layer to the scene. And Brian, I mean, Brian is so, I, I love it when he becomes Heisenberg. It's, yeah. it's so great. There's a sort of creepy horror movie kind of feel to it when he walks toward the house, which is great. I think you have like the tallest cherry picker shot on the planet coming up. Yeah. We, we, we got a very, very, very tall uh, non-film crane. Um, to a bucket crane or whatever you call them. Uh, it's like a Google satellite photo. It's, it's, mm. We went very, very high mm -hmm. with this. Ooh, I love and here like comes Saturn. Heisenberg. Oh, I love this. And Dave's music. Amazing. And this is a callback to episode f uh, three... No, wait. Uh, 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 313. Mm -hmm. 313, when they're, mm -hmm. when they're in the desert. Yep. Yes. Using the same instrumentation. Yeah. 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 And then Andy Vogley did it, who's our steady cam operator, and a camera operator did an amazing job here. Um, I wanted to get, stay very close to, to Walt, and that's a, that's a tricky thing to do. And then the phone call breaks I love up. it. And everybody... I've heard so many different uh, names of people who they think is on the phone. Who is it, George? Who in your mind is on the phone? Tyrus. Because a lot of people think it's Mike. Yeah, oh. now it's Tyrus. Yeah. Yeah. We hadn't spent enough time with Tyrus. It's not Mike's voice. It's kind of tricky. You can't really, we didn't really know what he sounds right. like, so. Oh, a little bit it, of air yeah, there. Yeah. Cold air. Look at that shot. There it is. Oh, my God. Look at that shadow. Unbelievable. Yeah, that's not great. Michael did such a beautiful job lighting that, as always. Oh, Betsy. Oh, the glamour, the oh, glamour. Oh. <laughs> With the purple gloves. I used to live next door to, a, uh, not next door, but a couple doors down from a purple lady. Her house is purple. Really? She had the cats that were cats. purple. Nice. Must have been like 15 of them. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy. You uh, want me to wheel them inside for you? Thank you. We actually reached out to some real delivery companies, uh, <laughs> forgetting that there was a line in it that, how does it go, George? Um, those, <laughs> well, you oh, yeah, you before, say it. before uh, those delivery jack-offs, yeah. right. I don't want to be ass raped by them again or something like that. It's, we it's, do well, like to use real, yes, real companies yes. and real brands, but occasionally our writers understand. make that a challenging prospect. Right. And I will not accept any boxes that have... And Betsy, can you explain your box-moving strategy here? Yeah. I'm just trying to organize them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because they're just this... They shouldn't be in that part of the living room. They should be in okay, this Okay, it drives part. me crazy just, that they're yeah. in my living room at all. <laughs> and now he's bitching at me about the rocks, that I check <laughs> the rocks. Oh, you poor thing. <laughs> this, is this a 5D shot? This is a 5D or? shot. Yeah, we just Sped jumped up. in. I think we did those. So we actually, now I can't remember whether we did that 5D or not. I, I thought was. you had the, the film camera. Do we, we might have jumped in with I the film you, camera, yeah. actually, with that one. And we had our last one. We did, and we just went around the car wash. Yeah. Hmm. And I, I love this 
car wash. I think it's got uh, great angles. I love that the hills are outside there. And and uh, I just, I like seeing these two in silhouette. Now, Marius, Marius, mm. excuse me, Marius, who is Marius, is, is, who's not an actor. And we've talked about he before He's now. He's a physicist, He's right? a, He is a oh, that's right. nuclear physicist, yeah. I believe. And this was a very big scene for him. And we and haven't he, seen him since the pilot, right, of... Yeah. Uh, the very first uh, episode of the That's of the right. series. And didn't Vince? Uh, Melissa, you can talk about yeah, this. Uh, he came in uh, actually with his family. His uh, his he had two. Ki- I think he came in with his two kids and his wife, who wanted to be extras. Yeah. And Vince saw a photo of him and kind of fell in love and talked to Gwen Savage, our extras casting person at the time, talked mm-hmm. him into into coming in to read for us. And I believe he's in in real life. I think he teaches in. Chicago, and he's a, a physicist, a professor or so. Right. He's a brilliant, brilliant guy. Yeah. You guys had to pat him a little bit, right? Because he lost some weight since he was there. Yeah, before. that's right. We uh, we actually it was for this outside scene that we did, um, and uh, was that in season three? Well, let's try. Uh, it's actually the episode four or three. 3. No, no, no. When when we we were outside, it was something. Um, I can't remember what episode eleven, three eleven. We actually had to pat him up. We um we put a ski vest underneath his sweater. You average 19 cars He's got kind of a uh, Bill Cosby sweater thing going. Mm-hmm. But this is a, this is um, Aaron and Betsy. You guys can speak to this as actors. This is a tricky scene, timing-wise, to do, and and there's comedy in here, and I think he does a really good job. No, oh, he does. Yeah, I think he's great, and he's so, he was so 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 excited to be asked back, and um, he was saying that. Um, all the students were such huge fan fans of uh, the show, and they're just so proud of their professor coming back, <laughs> you know, to be a part cool. of it again. You know, and he's so perfectly put out by the whole thing and insulted yeah. that she would. Mm-hmm. And he came in very prepared. He had he had ideas and and uh, um, had really put a lot of thought and time into how he was gonna how he's gonna do this scene. He was great in the pilot. You know, he didn't have a huge scene in the mm-hmm. pilot, but he was so, you just believe he is that guy. He broke my air fresheners. Yeah. He remembers the air fresheners. Now he wants to buy my car wash, but he's not man enough to come in. He, he grabbed himself, as he says. Yeah, I love that. That's so great. <laughs> but if he didn't play the pilot scene the way he did, this scene wouldn't right, have worked, totally. you know? Yeah. Million dollars. Yeah. Now please leave. And her confidence is just, oh, so frustrated. <laughs> we did do a take where Anna um, grabbed an air freshener off the wall here and walked out with it, but uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> we didn't leave. <laughs> is this our first return to Saul Jeez. this season? Yeah. We get um, to see a, another uh, take of one of his commercials. Mm-hmm. And he's recalling the air disaster at the end of uh, season <laughs> so, two. So he's tasteless. now trying to scrounge up work. <laughs> from the victims. <laughs> so He's an airplane chaser. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and now we're back in the bar that we were at, in the, which was a, a great, <laughs> great set. Shocked to the senses. I wonder how you sue for that. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Jonathan's, we had to blue screen that, so, so uh, Jonathan's look, not lo- looking at anything when we're shooting it. And we shot it, the commercial separately and then dropped it in in, in post. And uh, we used a little voiceover of David Robinson, who was a post PA for us years yeah. ago. Right. And once again, Michael Slovis is beautiful at this. lighting. Oh, yeah. It's like a perfect shot back to a Western. It was not easy finding this bar, actually. There's a lot of bars Can in Albuquerque. Can we go there? Let's go there. Go to the yeah, bar? Let's go there this year. That's a great, yeah, great bar. I think we should go there. Is that the one? Is that near Saul's office or not? Uh, I can't remember where it is. It's um, not. I think it's not. not. The light bounces off it's the near, ceiling. It's uh, near, what's that restaurant that we all love, Jenny? Uh, Jennifer, Jennifer James. James. Jennifer James. Jennifer James. It's right near Jennifer James. Jennifer James, awesome Albuquerque restaurant. Really? Yeah. I've never been there. Oh my gosh, It's Aaron. very good. I will you go haven't? there. I'm no. going to take you to Jennifer James. Please? I will. Do they have um, red or green chili there? I don't know. Yeah, I don't. Well, it's a different it's kind of thing. Yeah. It's a yeah. different kind of menu. It's no almost way. like going to a New York restaurant. Wow. Yeah, it's all orange inside. Well, let's let's do. But this. it's in Albuquerque. Mm-hmm. I like it. These guys are so great here. I love these guys. Everything I did 
I did out of loyalty to my partner. And it's so hard not just to watch. <laughs> I know. <laughs> of course. Another, another brilliant scene, George, that you wrote here. I hope you can George, you're a really good <laughs> Thank writer. Thank you. Just like you I should keep doing it. You should. Don't just, keep the, just keep it coming. Just yeah. keep yeah. it coming, buddy. Come on now. <laughs> And Michelle, on a technical basis, do you have to kind of keep the camera focus soft away from the the bar, so you don't have any particular brand showing up? No, no, that's all that's all dressed by it our is. our our department, and and we can we can see it. If and also, uh, if you went into an existing bar and you saw tons and tons of different brands, mm -hmm. but you don't focus on anything, you can actually do you that. Can get away yeah, with that. but we had to take down all, any big signage or anything like that. And, right. and we actually uh, took a lot out of that bar and redressed it because it was it was actually a little bit more high-end than we originally wanted and, and, and played it. It must be particularly hard with bars because there's so much signage in those things, you know, from there like, is. you know, it's just like everything. And is mirrors a, and yeah. televisions. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Things that we can We shoot in bars a lot on this show, actually. Yeah, we do. And yeah. it's, it's, it's challenging. We've shot in a lot of different bars. We have shot in right. some good bars. Our episodes, Michelle, have had a lot of bars. Didn't right. we have like three bars in one episode well, last We year? had that Mexican bar and last was, year that was great. And there was a fight. That was the one that Dean oh, yeah, got in that right. fight. Yeah. That was two bars. I think yeah. there was another bar in there, too. I'm not... George, we know you like to drink. Yeah, that's, that's so. it. Yeah. I look at this. We should also talk about the, the editing on the cut on the punch, which was kind of interesting. Yeah, it was, was uh, we actually wanted to, uh, well, we, in, in reality, the way we shot it is these guys get up off their bar stools for the punch, and Vince wanted to tighten it up and have it happen sooner. And so it looks like Jonathan punches... Uh, Walt while they're still sitting down, but they don't really. Uh, that's not how we shot it. Which is really hard Which to do. Which is the magic of editing. <laughs> Kelly Dixon, once yeah. again, working her brilliance. And the intent was really just to take the audience by surprise. Yes. Well, it was written a little bit differently than we ended up cutting it. So, yeah, yeah we yeah. shot it with a, a different way, and then we ended up, which is which often happens in the editing room with, with uh, because it's it, it's such a collaboration of ideas. Sometimes you get into editing, and you can change the concept of something and and uh, and it works great you get the right. best impact without all the information which is kind of amazing because you don't have a question that he's hitting him from a sitting position even though physically that would be very hard to do yes he's right. got a very very strong upper arm <laughs> hit him from the seat <laughs> and the glass is skittering on the ground kind of just yeah. it's such a nice yeah. it's such an elegant set of cuts are you done I see. Uh, Jonathan's great yeah uh, uh -huh. Walt has Dead overplayed his stare. hand a bit here. Uh -huh. And here it comes. Oh. oh. What a now beautiful set yeah. of cuts. Boom, boom, boom. Ooh. You know, my first uh, scene ever with Jonathan Banks was, you know, uh, after Jesse wakes up and finds Jane dead, he comes over and he starts, you know, slapping Jesse around. Mm-hmm. He hit me so hard. <laughs> Seriously? So hard. And this is my first interaction with really? the Jonathan Banks. I'm like, wow, he is so method. <laughs> and I'm terrified <laughs> of him. My ear, like, uh, it was, anyways, I just wanted to. You well, woke up, you found her, that's all you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You woke up, you found her, so you just kept slapping me. And sometimes you do a couple slaps, like, so hard. Anyways, I just had to say that. There's no point wow. punches with Jonathan Banks. Yeah, so like, yeah, but it really got dude, me into back the off. scene. <laughs> yeah, but then that was the last time he yeah. like, really abused me. Uh-huh. Now, that, that uh, motorcycle dude that said uh, great party oh. was uh, Chris, one of our drivers, yeah. uh -huh. which was a, a callback from an earlier episode. Yeah, and he was with and Jane on the steps, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, such a great guy. We so lucked out with our crew. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, for, I mean, cast and crew, everybody is just... You sticking or do I gotta flip you over? Oh, poor Jesse, so desperate to keep the party <laughs> that going. That line. I know, remember we had to ask what the translation, Aaron and I had to oh, ask yeah. what the translation was. Flip you over was. and check you for a sliz. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I don't even want to know where you got that from, George. Well, I think that's a t-shirt. I, 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 I do want to know, George. Sliz was Vince's word. I had never heard that word before. Seriously, I, was it really? I actually had written... Uh, uh, pussy, but that was not going to get by uh, the censors. So, yeah. so we turned like to Vince pass, yeah. for a new phrase. <laughs> but uh, I think Sliz is better. Yeah. I think Vince, that's what he should give us for gifts some year. T -shirt a book with full Sliz. of all different sort yeah. of euphemisms, Sliz. if you will, for a vagina. <laughs>
Oh, and this is such a tragic oh. ending. He just doesn't oh. want to, he does not want to be left alone oh, with no. his own inner demon. <laughs> and Badger climbing into his tiny Fiero. <laughs> <laughs> Best I love car that, choices. I love that Badger drives that <laughs> and oh Skinny Pete drives like the big, big boat yeah. car. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. And this this moment coming up is what with the, we went through the whole stereo thing coming oh, up yeah. and and Aaron you just you do this so well it's just you just feel the 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 loneliness and the and the pain that you're culpable that you're in this next moment that you that you're dealing with and that graphic equalizer the flashing graphic yeah, equalizer it's just so great and and having to actually rig that so it goes to the music it was all a challenge. Yeah, and this track was uh, kind of an interesting way of closing it out. Honey Claws is the artist, and a track called Digital Animal. And again... You could, sorry, I'm just going to say you yeah. see the speaker there doing the pumping, and, and uh, that mm -hmm. was that, that kid that helped us figure that out. And then Andy Vogley does a great job here. Sorry, uh, Thomas. No, but it just, it just captures the scene so much. You feel like you can hear how loud that is because of that bounce, you know? Yeah. Well, Vince really, it was really important to Vince and George that we, we have that, and we, we, thanks for a bunch of people, we figured it out. Oh. Yeah, and of course, if, you, if you're actually playing the music that loud, song, it would Thomas. blow his ears out. Yeah. Oh, Aaron, Aaron that's and this so is good. Aaron, my God. Michelle, the great pullback. I, I have here. chills, Aaron Paul. Yeah. I, I love, I love, I love you all. <laughs> <laughs> Can I hold you, Aaron. And look I at this so beautiful, <laughs> tragic shot. Oh. Yeah. Ah. Uh, Andrew Vogel, McLaren, and Vince with that George Mashos, cutting out right all you on guys. the credits. I think that I remember uh, Vince, when we were on the stage and we shut that off, and Vince said, why don't we cut it right in the credits? And it was one of those moments where, like, there it is. It's perfect. Yeah. It just gave it so much impact. That was that was a big music episode. Nice job to you yeah, and Dave great. and Porter. You. Yeah, just really, really awesome work as usual. And we, we, George, we awesome We live script. in fear of these Thank things. You. So awesome, Director. I remember when we read the script in this thing, we were like, oh, my God, how much is in this? What a blast. Yeah. So yeah. much fun. Uh, Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.